the back. Now, as Mr. Rogers liked to read with a sweater, I have a cape. <laughs> and as you'll see, there's a time, not just that I work for NASA, but NASA will explain this story to you, you will see. Our story in it, the universe tells our cosmic story. Let's hear what the universe has to say. My dearest Berkeley, you may not know me. We haven't talked before. I am the universe, and it's time for us to get to know each other. After all, I'm 13 billion years old now. Give or take a million, or a billion. And how old do you think you are? Nine, 13? How about 13 billion years old too? Yes, you see, you are a part of me. You are a part of the universe. And you've never been separate from me. That's why I'm going to tell you a story about me, which is also a story about you. Now, there are many stories about how everything came to be. This story is based on a discovery by Earthling scientists. And as they learn more, this story will change. I can't wait to share with you what I know so far. Now, my dearest Earthling, make yourself comfortable, and let's begin at the very beginning. And there you are. I go back on that. Once you were a tiny speck buried deep in the dark inside your mother. But you couldn't stay small. And there you were. You grew and grew until one day you were ready to leave the darkness. <laughs> on that very special day, your birthday, you were born into the light. <laughs> I too had a special day when I was born. Like you, I started as a tiny speck smaller than a piece of dust under your bed. I know it's hard to imagine that I started out so small, but I did. And if you asked me where I came from, I would tell you that I don't know. It's the greatest of all mysteries. But there I was, like you. I couldn't stay small. I was bursting with those wild and dazzling dreams of galaxy stars and planets in radiant colors. Bright yellow, molten red, piercing blue. In other dreams, I saw strange creatures, fish cruising deep blue seas, insects alighting on fires, birds swooping down on their prey. And I saw you there, gazing at the stars. Could such amazing things really happen? I wondered, oh, how I wanted my dreams to happen. But how could they, how could you happen? And then suddenly I realized that I could be the thing in my dreams. I could explode in a giant star, go green in a thin blade of grass, roar as a lion and purr as a kitten, feel feelings with love and sadness and wonder. It was then that I burst into a grapefruit-sized fireball of a universe packed with surging energy. It took only an instant. Space and time had just begun. I was so bright back then, I would have blinded you if you had but of course you didn't yet. In a flash, space exploded. It exploded inside me with unimaginable power, like a gargantuan balloon. I blew up to the size of a galaxy. It all happened faster than you could snap your finger. Hotter than one trillion degrees, I was blazing with the heat of billions of suns. Suddenly, gigantic, Glowing bolts of energy flashed everywhere, shrinking me into teensy things. Oh no, what have I done? Actually, I had done something incredible. Yes, I had turned energy into the very first things, tiny particles. I had made my very first atoms. They were atoms of hydrogen. And this hydrogen fog began to ripple and come together into springs. And gravity pulled the springs together into globs. And these enormous hydrogen globs started igniting into mother stars. I was shaping myself into those galaxies. Then mysterious black holes appeared in the center of many of these galaxies. 
and your mother star mixed together bunches of hydrogen and baked it three billion degrees into lots of different new elements or building blocks. One of these new elements was carbon. One day, genes of carbon called DNA would carry instructions from one generation to the next on how each living thing should grow. But before your own mother star could be born, the one you had, the sun, your mother star had to die. Your mother star ripped herself apart into a massive explosion, that supernova. Tiny specks of carbon and oxygen and calcium and all the other new building blocks she made blasted into space and cooled into stardust. And the stardust formed bigger clumps and they swirled into a dish shape. Faster and faster, hotter and denser, tighter and brighter until finally, whoosh, your sun flared into light. Born too were clumps of stardust, were the nine young planetary pups you see there. The third pup inside the young planetary pack, your Earth, was a, was a burning red ball of molten stardust. I was about eight and a half billion years old when your Earth was born. Erupting volcanoes spewed steam and other gases. The steam turned to rain, and the rain formed vast oceans. The ocean bubbled and boiled, and hot rocks oozed up through the rips in the ocean floor. What would I be my universe turn myself into next? Oh, this was exciting. Did I have enough energy, enough building blocks to turn myself into creatures? Of course, dear Earthlings, my story, our story, doesn't end here. So much still had to happen before I could turn myself to you. So in my next story, your planet Earth comes alive, but that will have to wait for another day. Until we talk again, I send you my very best from the cosmos. Remember, I am always with you, my sweet Earthling. And I'll tell you a secret. I'm even closer to you than that. It's true. I am you. Love. The universe. <laughs>